Hello. Uh, in this video, we're going to deal with a pr practical example of how to select an op-amp for a particular application, uh, given a set of constraints. And in this case, we're going to be constrained by the AC characteristics of the op-amp. So let's imagine that we have um, uh, a non-inverting amplifier, which we intend to use in an audio application, which means that our frequency of range is going to go up to 20 kilohertz. That's the, the aud audible range. And uh, as I said, let's imagine we want to use it in a non-inverting configuration and we know our closed loop gain is going to be 50. Uh, and we know our peak output voltage is not going to exceed in absolute value 0.2 volts. Um, the first thing that we need to do is uh, select an op-amp for our application. Or actually, the only thing we need to do is select an op-amp for our application uh, the specs that are going to affect our AC performance in, in this case are the bandwidth and the slew rate. And so we want to figure out what's the uh, minimum bandwidth and the minimum slew rate that our op-amp needs to have for this particular application. Um, just to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to change, instead of making this the, uh, the peak output voltage, I'm going to make it the peak input voltage. Um, obviously, our peak output voltage in that case is going to be uh, the gain, ACL, uh, which is 50, times the peak input voltage, which is 0.2. And so 10 volts for our peak output voltage. Uh, so let's first calculate the minimum bandwidth that our uh, op-amp needs to have, the minimum uh, transition frequency. So minimum FT for the op-amp. And we know that the um, gain bandwidth product is a constant for an op-amp, and so the unit gain frequency or transition frequency um, or small signal bandwidth, however you want to refer to it, is going to be equal to the product of uh, the closed loop gain, but it is the noise gain. Just so happens in the case of the non inverting amplifier, the noise is equal to the signal gain times the closed loop bandwidth. Now, the closed loop bandwidth, obviously, if we want to uh, use this in an audio application, we want that closed loop bandwidth to be greater than 20 kilohertz. And so um, I can say in my limit, I will say, you know, I want my FT to be greater than KN, which is 50. I'm already going to substitute values times the closed loop bandwidth, which again is going to be 20K. And so that means that I want my, my uh, transition frequency to be. Uh, greater than 1 megahertz. Second, I need to figure out what's the minimum value of my slew rate. Now, obviously, I want my slew rate limiting frequency to be, or full power bandwidth, same thing, to be greater than 20 kilohertz, because I don't want to get the slew rate uh, effects in my output of the amplifier. And so I want my FSR, which is equal to uh, the slew rate divided by 2 pi times uh, times the output. We want that to be uh, greater than 20 kilohertz. And so I can solve for my slew rate. And I will want it to be uh, greater than 2 pi times V out times FSR. 2 pi V out. Uh, times FSR, and so uh, greater than uh, 2 pi times 10, as we calculated earlier, the V-out maximum, times uh, 20K. And that gives me a, a slow rate of uh, 1.25 times 10 to the 6 volts per second, or what's equivalent, 1.25 volts per microsecond. So this will be my minimum FT 
and my minimum um, is low rate. So now I can go, um, either I have a set of op amps from, from which I have to choose, or if I have complete freedom, I can go to a manufacturer's website um, or a distributor's website and go and do a parametric search and select specific value for FT, a specific value for slew rate, and it'll give me a list of op amps that I can use. Let's imagine that I have two that I can compare. For example, I have an uh, 741A and an LM318. If I look at the um, data sheet for the LM741A, I find that my uh, transition frequency gives me two values. Uh, it has 0.437 as the minimum or 1.5 as the typical, and that's in megahertz. And my slew rate, uh, it gives me 0.3 volts per microsecond as the minimum. And uh, actually, I'm going to put the unit at the end, so I don't have to repeat it twice. So 0.3 as the minimum, um, 0.5 as the typical, and that's in volts per microsecond. Whereas the LM318 has a, uh, a unity gain frequency of 15 megahertz. Fifteen megahertz, typical, and a slew rate of um, fifty volts per microsecond, typical. Now, normally, you know which value will I use, the typical or the minimum, to decide. In this case, uh, there is there is really not an issue because we can see that the seven forty one A is not going to meet the slew rate. Um, in the case of the transition frequency, if we consider the typical. It will be there, but it's still close enough that we probably, you know, will want to give ourselves a little bit more room. Um, whenever we can, uh, whenever the a data sheet gives us uh, worst case values, we want to use those in our calculations. Uh, they not always give worst case values, in which case we typically will have to go with either typical or select another op amp, uh, which shows us minimum values. If that particular parameter is really critical for performance um, in our in our circuit, uh, in this case, again, uh, the minimum specs for the 741A will not meet the minimums needed for transition frequency and slew rate. The LM318 meets both, uh, and you know, it's uh, we still have a, have a lot of room in there. So, if we were able to find something in between uh, that still meets the specs, it perhaps cheaper than the LM318, we probably will go with that choice. Uh, but if we had to choose between those two, obviously the 318 is the one that we will choose. And again, we only have typical values. So if um, if this happened to be something really critical, uh, we might do different things. We might select a different op amp or a different version or of the uh, same family that perhaps gives us uh, minimum values or worst case values. Otherwise, we could contact the company and normally, uh, for all these devices, whenever they give you a typical spec, what it means is they, they have run, uh, you know, a, a few hundreds of these devices and they have tested them and they have come up with a distribution. Uh, the typical value will be the mean of the distribution. But if you contact the company, they can probably also provide um, values for the standard deviation, um, etc. So that you get an idea for uh, how far away from those 15 megahertz or those 50 volts per microsecond you can expect most of the parts to be. And if it just so happens, you know, they give you a standard deviation. If you measure three standard deviations, you know that, you know, 99% of the parts are going to be uh, within those ranges. And then um, you can perhaps add a little bit of sandbagging on both sides to make sure that, that you capture almost everything. And that's it. Um, this will be the same for any other specs. Whenever you're trying to look for an op-amp for a particular application, you're typically going to have a set of critical specs and uh, you're going to figure out what are the uh, the minimum or maximum values of different specs that you need. And then based on those values, you can either select from a list of available op-amps, the one that's going to match your specifications and if several of them match them, you're going to consider things such as cost um, and other things. Um, 
but also if uh, it happens to be that you don't have a particular list and you're clueless as to which op-amp to use, you know, you're, you're not really attached to any particular uh, op-amp that you have been using in the past, you can always go to a parametric search in one of the manufacturers or distributors websites, uh, enter the critical specs, and you should come up with a list of um, available devices that you can select from. Thank you.